And Nashville police say the shooter who killed three children and three adults at a private Christian school yesterday morning made detailed maps of the building and apparently left behind notes and writings which may lead police to determine a potential motive. On that note, joining us now for more is Sonali Rajan. She's an associate professor of health education at Columbia University and somebody who has extensively researched specifically school shootings. Um, Sonali, you co-authored an article in the LA Times last year saying that many of these school shootings could be preventable, but the way the nation approaches addressing these shootings is part of the problem. What are we doing now and what should we be doing to prevent school shootings? Well, thank you so much for having me on today on unfortunate, uh, under these unfortunate circumstances. Uh, so there are a number of ways in which we could be preventing school gun violence from happening and we are we have a number of solutions we could use at all different levels from policy on down. Uh, in the article you just referenced, we do talk about everything from bans on assault weapons and large capacity magazines that hold more than 10 bullets. Uh, we talk about permit to purchase laws. We talk about extreme risk protection orders and restrictions on the kinds of firearms that those younger than 21 years old uh, can purchase. We also talk about safe storage and child access prevention laws. All of this together, taken together, these are policies that would work, that, that do work, that are driven by a very robust, robust body of scientific evidence and would allow us to coexist safely with the more than 400, million, 400 plus million firearms that are currently in circulation here in the United States. And just for clarity, um, when you say protective orders, and this is because just you and I have spent a lot of time on the phone, on text and on email talking about this, you mm -hmm. mean red flag laws in layman's exactly. terms. Exactly. So red flag laws essentially allow authorities or family members to petition a court if a loved one is believed to pose a threat to themselves or others, and essentially to request that that person be temporarily dispossessed of their firearms. Mm -hmm. And research, research around this is very encouraging. Uh, they've shown to be quite effective. And so, again, we want to look at all the tools in our toolbox so we can prevent these tragedies from happening. And I think this is what makes people around the world scratch their heads. It's like the U.S. knows what it can do. The policies exist. Yeah. They even work in some jurisdictions. But the reality is... The trauma in this country is extensive and widespread. I know the CDC ranks gun violence as the leading cause of death among children and teens here in this country. Talk to us about, geez, the kids who survive uh, these horrific incidents. And just to be a young person in America today being exposed to this trauma, how extensive is that? It's... It's tragically extremely extensive, and there is a, a normalization of these experiences that we are placing on our children that we have an obligation to address and reduce and fix. Uh, the research that my colleagues and I have done have shown that exposure to gun violence, specifically during childhood, is what we call an adverse childhood experience. And that means these are potentially traumatic events that disrupt a child's stability and sense of safety. And without access to needed interventions and support, these ACEs can and do lead to dozens of poor physical and mental health outcomes in the short and the long term. And repeated exposure to ACEs like gun violence during childhood only places children at heightened risk. So the more times they experience these, the, the, poor, uh, the worse off they are. Yeah. Well, wow. Sonali Rajan, thank you so much. For anybody who wants to hear more about her research, Sonali takes part in our documentary that is streaming now at any time here on the CBS News stream, Guns in the Classroom. Thank you.